These mutated creatures are so wild, it's even illegal for scientists to continue researching them. The Chernobyl Exclusion Zone Radioactive Mutant Wildlife When the Chernobyl nuclear reactor exploded in 1986, the surrounding land became an accidental sanctuary for wildlife, but one bathed in invisible radiation. The fallout blanketed forests, rivers, and farmland, saturating the soil and the bodies of animals. Now, over decades, biologists have documented changes in everything from barn swallows to wild boar. Many swallows inside the zone have, you know, crooked beaks, strange patches of uh, albinism, and smaller brains compared to those living outside the contaminated area. Tumors are also more common, and reproductive success is a lot lower. Not all mutations are purely destructive. Eastern tree frogs inside the zone tend to have much darker skin than their relatives outside. This dark pigmentation likely developed because melanin can help absorb and neutralize radiation, acting as a biological shield. The shift happened over just a few generations, a rare glimpse of evolution unfolding in real time. Wolves too are thriving in very unexpected ways. Genetic testing of Chernobyl's wolf population has revealed possible adaptations in immune systems and cancer resistant genes. These animals roam with little fear of humans living at, you know, densities far higher than in most European forests, but working with them is very dangerous. Their bodies can carry radioactive particles, making it illegal to remove them from the zone for direct study. Most research must be done in the field at a distance with strict contamination protocols. Bikini Atoll, the nuclear test induced mutations. Between 1946 and 1958, the United States detonated 23 nuclear bombs at Bikini Atoll, turning a tropical paradise into a radioactive wasteland, basically. The blasts vaporized islands, boiled the lagoon, and coated the atoll in radioactive debris. Today, scientists who visit under special permits have found startling changes in the wildlife that returned. Fish caught in the lagoon sometimes display skeletal deformalities or unusual you know patterns in their scales coral reefs while regrown have taken on very massive dome like structures not seen elsewhere with bizarre shapes that suggest abnormal growth rates coconut crabs already the largest land dwelling invertebrates on earth sometimes grow even larger here and some show irregular correlation or claw asymmetry now because radiation lingers in the soil and water these creatures can be dangerously contaminated. Laws strictly limit the handling or removal of any wildlife from the atoll, partly you know, to prevent the spread of radioactive material and partly because of the political sensitivity of the site. For now, most of Bikini Atoll's mutated residents remain subjects for underwater cameras and remote observation rather than, you know, hands-on experimentation. Super mosquitoes, which are resistant to insecticides. Now, in Southeast Asia, scientists monitoring mosquito populations stumbled onto something very alarming. Entire swarms of AIDS Egypti mosquitoes, hopefully I'm saying that right, that can survive insecticide treatments that would normally wipe them out completely. Genetic testing revealed changes in the voltage-gated sodium channel genes, altering the way their nervous systems interact with chemicals. These so-called, you know, super mosquitoes can can carry very deadly diseases like dengue fever, zika, and yellow fever. What makes them dangerous is not just their disease carrying capacity, but their resilience. Traditional, you know, fogging and spraying have almost no effect on these resistant populations, meaning outbreaks can spread faster and last a lot longer. Working with these mosquitoes in a lab is super risky business. International biosafety rules require high containment facilities to ensure not a single insect escapes. Now in some regions, it's outright just illegal to breed or study live resistant strains because of the fear that releasing even a few could trigger uncontrollable outbreaks. Now research often happens in heavily fortified labs or through computer modeling rather than direct experimentation, which we're all happy about. The genetically engineered dire wolf look alike using advanced DNA sequencing and CRISPR, C R I S P R editing. Scientists attempted to recreate the appearance of the prehistoric dire wolf by altering a great wolf's genetic code. The modified animal developed a more massive skull, denser fur, and a broader frame, closely, you know, resembling the fossilized predators that roamed North America thousands of years ago. Supporters hailed it as a milestone in 
in de-extinction science, while critics pointed out that this dire wolf was not genetically identical to the extinct species, but just a modern wolf with similar traits. What's more troubling though is the animal displayed very unusual pack behaviors and a heightened predatory, you know, drive, possibly linked to the genetic changes. Many wildlife agencies condemn the experiment, warning that releasing such predators into the wild, even accidentally, could disrupt existing ecosystems. I mean, in some regions, breeding genetically altered predators is now prohibited entirely, and any research requires government oversight at every single stage. They look super cute to me, honestly. The Woolly Mouse Experiment. In a project aiming toward the resurrection of extinct Ice Age animals, genetic engineers created a woolly mouse, a laboratory mouse with thick golden fur designed to mimic traits of the woolly mammoth. Now, by editing genes responsible for hair growth, skin thickness, and color, the team produced a rodent that looked widely out of place in modern biology. While the woolly mouse was meant as a proof of concept for future de extinction work, it raised immediate ethical and economic logical questions. Could such traits, if accidentally released, give animals advantages in certain environments and disrupt, you know, ecosystems? Would reviving extinct traits cross an ethical boundary in science? We don't know. I mean, the experiment caused regulatory bodies to tighten oversight on genetic modification in mammals, especially those that create, you know, heritable traits for reasons outside of medical research. I mean, in some countries, producing animals with non-native traits is now banned without direct proof of necessity. Multi-headed and multi-limbed animals in nature. Now, throughout history, farmers and wildlife officials have occasionally encountered animals born with extra heads, limbs, or even duplicated body parts, which are conditions caused by developmental mutations during gestation. Now, two-headed snakes have been found slithering through gardens, two-headed turtles, three-headed frogs spotted in ponds, and calves born with duplicated spines in rural barns. While these animals capture, you know, public fascination, their survival odds are usually really low. The extra body Body parts can make eating, moving, and breathing difficult, leading most to just pass away very young. Now, those that live longer are often kept in captivity for study or display, but you know, this raises ethical issues. In many countries, intentionally breeding such animals is banned, and experimenting on them is tightly restricted under animal welfare laws. Now, because of this, most of what we know comes from opportunistic sightings and photographs rather than formal lab research. They remain living curiosities, rare, delicate, and largely unstudied. Glow in the dark and other genetically modified animals. Now, from jellyfish genes inserted into cats to fluorescent zebrafish that light up under ultraviolet light, scientists have honestly pushed the boundaries of what's biologically possible. These creatures were often created to demonstrate genetic engineering techniques or to trace biological processes in research. Now, one of the most famous is the Enviro pig, which is a pig engineered to produce less phosphorus in its waste to reduce pollution from farming. But these experiments also opened a big debate. Should scientists alter animals purely because they can? In some cases, the modifications were purely cosmetic, such as glowing pets created for novelty. I mean, this sparked a public backlash. And in many countries, legal bans on breeding or selling genetically altered animals outside of strict scientific or medical purposes. Today, most such animals are kept in controlled research facilities, and unauthorized projects can result in fines or criminal charges, so straight to jail. Which mutated creatures made you squirm the most? Or which one would you want more research done on? Let me know. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Ashley. Halloween's around the corner. Perfect time to mutate into one of these bad boys yourself. I'll be going as a two-headed snake. Let me know what you're going as. See you later.